My name's Alton Petrie. I'm 26 years old. I'm from Los Angeles, California. Um, currently, I'm a full-time student, sociology major at Morehouse College. My experience with the criminal justice system started really when I was born. <laughs> I was born in jail. My mother um, was incarcerated when she had me. Um, however, um, my grandmother raised me. She raised five of my mother's six kids. I was raised in a neighborhood called The Jungles. It's a poverty-stricken and gang-ridden neighborhood. And so being raised in this environment, I was already just automatically subjected to, you know, encounters with the police. Um, there, there was a gang injunction placed in the neighborhood, which is a court order that restricts and prohibits documented gang members from being together within the vicinity of the neighborhood. So, so many times I've gone, I've gotten arrested and gone to jail just for walking down the street with a friend. But to the police, we're gang members, thugs, and we're up to no good. And so because of this gang injunction, encounters with the police was very frequent for me, and which eventually led to um, me being arrested at the age of 18 for a crime that I did not commit. I believe that the criminal justice system is very effective at responding to youth. And I say that because they're, they're quick to respond and arrest someone, you know. But the real question, I believe, is not how effective they are at responding, but how effective are they at actually helping and assisting with um, these kids who are indulging or involved in uh, criminal behavior. And I, I'm a firm believer that no kids should be placed in the adult system. Um, I fortunately was, as a youth, I was I was fighting my fitness, which is the court's process to determine whether I'm fit or unfit to be tried as a juvenile as opposed to an adult. I fortunately didn't make it to the adult system or the adult prison system, should I say. Although my charges, if I were convicted, I would have, I faced a potential of 46 years to life for a crime that I didn't even commit. But where I was housed, I was with the 18 to 25 year olds. So it was like a, a youth prison. It was a jail within a jail. From my cell, I would look out the windows. I would see the kids in the regular units playing kickball, baseball, you know, just doing regular activities, walking freely, or at the most, walking with their hands behind their back. For whatever reason, we left the compound. The compounds where all the juveniles in LA County were being held, who were being tried as adults. For whatever reason, we only left for two reasons, which was transportation to court or to go to the medical module. Those are the only two reasons you leave those gates. And when you do, your wrists are handcuffed, your waist is wrapped around, and you're shackled at your feet. They are not effective at all at doing what they should be doing, which is rehabilitating the minds of these kids. The role that race and ethnicity plays in the juvenile criminal justice system plays a huge role. In my opinion, which I believe is a fact, <laughs> it is the, it's the main factor at everything. We live in a society, you know, it was built on oppression or a nation that was built on oppression. So we have this long history, which although it's hundreds of years later, it's still it's still there. The hurt and the pain is still there. The hate is still there. Um, just systemic racism, you know? Like, you can't, you can't focus on this issue, on resolving it, without focusing and addressing the role of race and ethnicity. I was arrested at the age of 18 for a robbery that I did not commit. Um, and I believe my arrest stemmed from um, just my reputation of being stopped by the police so many times. Because they seen me out in the neighborhood a lot and I would get stopped with other members who they knew, um, you know, were committing crimes or doing things of that nature, or just well known, they looked at me like, okay, we haven't caught you for anything, but you must be doing something. And so exactly a week after my 18th birthday, I was arrested. When I come to find out what happened, 
the restaurant was robbed. One robbery turned into four robberies and an attempted murder charge. And so, at this time, I know I'm innocent 100% sure. Like, once they explain everything, I'm like, yo, this has nothing to do with me. And I know I was going to night school um, at the time because I was trying to compensate my, my credit so I could graduate on time. So I had my grandmother check and see if um, I was at night school at the time. So long story short, come to find out, I was at night school during the day and time of the incident. My night school teacher, she wrote a letter and sent the attendance roster stating that I was present. However, the juvenile courts failed to hear my cries of innocence. So I was incarcerated for about two years fighting my fitness, just the course process to determine if I'm fit or unfit to be tried as an adult. And so they offered me a number of plea bargains. I declined all of those. And in my situation, I, I thought, I'm like, okay, I'm in this situation for a reason. Like, although I didn't, my mentality was I was innocent of the crime, but I was guilty of the lifestyle. So I didn't take legal responsibility, but I took personal responsibility for my situation. Had I listened to my grandmother, <laughs> you know, had I not been around certain people who I knew um, got into a lot of trouble, but in essence, those were my friends, my childhood friends. I didn't see them how the police see them. These are my friends, like we grew up together, we played together, fought together, all of these things. However, um, so within my time incarcerated, I got my GED and my high school diploma. Because mind you, this was two months before my high school graduation. So I'm thinking I'm about to graduate and I get locked up. Fast forward, on my last court date, my lawyer, she, um, she said, I asked the uh, courts to dismiss the case. They're not going to do it. However, this is what I was hoping for. They offered me one year and one strike. Mind you, my charge is robbery and attempted murder. Attempted murder is 25 to life by itself. And so, in this position, I'm faced with the conflict of do I admit to something I didn't do just to get this year and a strike? A year is nothing. I've already been there two years. Or do I say no and I go to a dope court where I face a potential 46 years to life sentence? I couldn't do it. I told the courts, hell no. <laughs> I told them, no, I'm not, I, I just can't accept it. So I was sent to a dope court, and, but that was the risk I was willing to take for my freedom. But through the great, with the grace of God, my case was dismissed within three days. That was in 2010. And I've been home since then, and I've really just dedicated my life to, to mentoring youth, to you know just letting them know that, hey, although we grow up in a society where no one cares about us, like we don't, have, we don't receive any help, but we're punished for the same reason you don't help us. Um, I really just dedicated my life to helping the youth think positively and focus on education. And on the other part, um, I've been an advocate at um, fighting for youth rights. There are many alternatives to youth incarceration. Before intervention, I'm a firm believer of prevention. So just prevent this entire issue, you know. But we all know that that isn't the case. You can easily be arrested, like in my case, for something you didn't do. So I believe the alternatives are, at first, just education early on, that if you invest in the kids and their education, that it will, it will prevent them from you know, leading a life of criminal behavior down the line. Also, um, just exposing them to new and different and positive experiences early on. The idea behind it is that if you treat kids like criminals or if you treat them like all of these people that they truly aren't, it's like you condition them to become that. You condition them to become that criminal. So if you place them in a facility where it just bars and chains and locks and then you're in there you're in there amongst other youth who, you know, they're perceived as criminals aware. You're just gonna learn how to become a better criminal. And then 
Let's say when you do get out, you're going to resort right back to the lifestyle that led you there in the first place. Treating kids like kids and not adults. For so long, we can't buy tobacco or alcohol or enter the club. But once we make a mistake, you treat us like these adults. You said we never were. So I believe that if we could just focus on alternatives that really rehabilitate and educate the youth, although they may have committed a mistake or a crime, that if you just really invest in them and de uh, develop their minds, that they will return to society productive members.